Fox and everybody, welcome to BioS3 Raw TV. Today we're going to talk about something that I found super interesting, and I got a um, uh, an email, and we're going to do a little story time mixed into it too. So we got story time and email mixed together. Pretty cool, right? Yeah. Okay. So let's start out with um, email. Basically, this individual graduated from university. Um, he's been training for like three years. He's got a really good build on him. He's a lot bigger than the average person. And his thing is he's going to be entering the corporate job world soon. And he's worried about the social stigma of people who look bigger and less intelligent, which is definitely not true, but unfortunately that stigma exists. Um, he said that um, now he feels like the bigger he gets, it could have a detrimental uh, negative effect on his career. Um, so here's something interesting, okay? So um, he asked me, do I think his concern is real? Now... Here's the thing is I have a little bit of experience with this. Um, after my cousin Christopher died, he worked at a place called the Judge Rothberg Center. Okay, and that was a school for autistic, autistic, autistic kids and behavioral problem kids. And um, they had a, um, a position open there and his girlfriend at the time, Candy, still worked there. She pushed my application through to go work at this school. Now I was you know, out of high school, out of college. I actually had a drug problem at this point. And I was walking around about 240 something pounds, pretty strong, pretty big, young. And I got the job, fill out the paperwork, everything up for sure, I got the job. So I show up at this job on Monday morning, whatever day it was, and I walk in, and it's a school. So it's, you know, it's a very, in, very, very kind of normal, you know, kind of straight laced, just, institutionalized type school I mean it's a school so it's got classes that the kids change and stuff and you know I walk in I fill out these paperwork you sign in and stuff and they had a whole bunch of new people starting at the school for different positions teachers this that special behavioral you know teachers or whatever and they had me who was going to be part of this um, emergency response team now what the emergency response team was was one of these kids, when they would have an episode, we would actually burst in there as a team, like four or five of us, take the kid and try to restrain him. If he doesn't calm down, we remove him from the classroom. And they had little, um, it, I don't want to say a cell, but that's what it was kind of like, where you would actually bring the child, the, the kid in, and it was a kid, they were teenagers, and um, put them on a four point restraint board. And if we had to, take the board and put it on the floor that was matted, and we would close the door until they calm down. So you had this protocol you had to follow. You obviously have to make sure that you didn't hurt the kid. Um, you have to make sure that you didn't get hurt, etc, etc. So when I first got there, you know, I'm not going to lie, I was kind of out of my element a little bit. All right. So I walk in and I'm like, okay, I'm not really, I'm not a teacher. You know, I'm not somebody that should be around kids. I'm not a fucking role model because I'm on drugs. So we have this, um, this meeting. So we, we take a tour of the school, all of us together. There's probably like 15 people there that are starting this new job. We take this tour of the school and then we have this meeting. So they show us the classrooms. The kids are actually in class. So we're getting to see kind of how the day would be. They're showing us these different rooms where you have the restraints and stuff in them. They're explaining all these different things. And because it's a, a very, you know, different positions that are all together in this little group, we're getting an insight as to what this person's gonna be doing, that person's gonna be doing, et cetera, et cetera, not just yourself. So we now are in this meeting in this boardroom. And um, mind you, I mean, this response team at 5'10", 240 pounds. I was big and I was lean. It was pretty lean. I mean, I wasn't the, the big fat guy. And the other people that were, were there were obviously not, you know, in, really in shape or anything. So I definitely stood out just by the way my physique looked. And I was wearing a, um, like a button-up shirt. But of course, the button-up shirt was tight in the neck, tight in the traps. The arms are tight. The lats are tight. It's a little baggy in the waist. You can see my physique coming through the, the, um, the shirt. And we're, they're going around the, the, the meeting, around the table, and everybody's introducing themselves. Mike, I'm Joe, a degree in psychology. I'm, you know, I'm Barbara, I have a degree in child psychology, blah, 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 blah. They get to me, and I said, uh, my name's Jerry. Um, I'm a competitive bodybuilder, and I um, am a pro wrestler on the side. And that was it. Those were my, like, credentials, which made me feel really stupid. I felt really out of place and really stupid. However... For what I would have been doing in that school, I was perfect. Absolutely perfect. I had experience as a bouncer. I had experience with people that were fucking completely out of their minds on different drugs and stuff and restraining them without hurting them. 
I knew exactly what to do. I was bigger, stronger. I was perfect for the position, although it was different than everyone else. So I was so out of place. This is a 100% true story. And I had my Oxycontin that I had taken had worn off. And when we broke for lunch, I actually snuck out the side door and went home and never went back. And, um, you know, I remember getting home. My, my mom was like, oh, you know, how was your first day? And I said, I'm not going back. I said, I don't belong there. And, um, you know, I look back now and it was a very good job, a very good paying job, had benefits. I mean, it was an adult thing, a very grown up thing. It's not the corporate world like this guy's talking about, but it's a very adult thing. And I look back now, being who I am now and the strength that I have now, not muscle strength, but inner strength that I have now, had I stayed there, I could have literally proved to everyone there that I belong there just like they do. I could do the job that I needed to do and maybe could have even changed some people's minds about bodybuilders and pro wrestlers. I mean, I'm not, I'm not the brightest guy in the fucking world. I'm not the brightest bulb on the tree, but I'm also not completely fucking retarded. So they would see flat out that, look, you know, I'm funny. I got personality. May not be the sharpest knife in the drawer, but I'm still a knife. And maybe they would say, okay, you know, not all bodybuilders are roid rage fucking maniacs and want to kill people. You know, this guy's got compassion. This guy's got skills. He's got this, he's got that. You know, like things could have changed. So what do I think if I was this individual talking about this on the, the email? What do I think? I think you should take the jobs and change people's perspective of what bodybuilders are. You know, like plain and simple. If you're smart, show them you're smart. You're a good dresser? Show me you're a good dresser. You don't wear the fucking bedspreads like they think we wear the whole kind of them. Like they think back to the 90s with the T. Michael Baggy sweatshirts and shit. You know? Show them that you're calm. Show them that you're not a fucking maniac. Show them. The more that you're around them, the more you, that you show them, you talk about things, and they get to know you, they're going to understand that you're not some fucking Roy Rage maniac. And they're going to accept you. But you have to sit there and face the facts that they're going to judge you at first when they look at you. And that judgment is based on the stigma of the general public's stigma of bodybuilders and roids and all this shit so basically you're going to have to fight through a sort of prejudice that's put on you by the general public to these people who are now going to become your friends and co-workers and allies for fights that you may have in the corporate world but you're going to have to earn their respect you're going to have to earn their kindness you're going to have to earn all that stuff just like you would anywhere else and you know if you're strong enough you're going to earn that you know at that time i wasn't strong enough to do that i couldn't sit in that place and win everybody over one by one, but I could have, you know, and what would happen now, right now, if I had kept that job? You know, the people, all that worked there, the people that were in that boardroom that day in that meeting, might have all thought a little bit differently. Instead, now, what they probably think is this guy fucking took off because he's an idiot. He's a fucking spaz, he's a retard, he's a big muscle head, he couldn't fucking handle the left. So I basically proved them, proved to them what I thought they were thinking to begin with, which they might not have, but whatever, but the bottom line is I could have changed their mind and I didn't. So hindsight's I would go back and I would do it over. Biosetraining at gmail.com. Leave comments down below, but don't fight. www.biosetraining.com is a blog. It's the Make Them Change Their Mind bicep, and we're out.